Hi, and welcome back to our channel Summaries of a Bookworm. Your number one place for all who need or like to listen to book summaries. Let's start with the book summary of today. The stories in The Refugees were written by Viet Thanh Nguyen over the course of 20 years. Most of his characters are Vietnamese immigrants, and many have left Vietnam to get away from the communist government. In the first short story, the narrator, who is a ghostwriter who specializes in memoirs, for people who have survived terrible things like plane crashes and kidnappings, sees the ghost of her brother, who has been dead for a long time. He shows up in the middle of the night, wet from swimming in America. He died when pirates attacked the boat where the narrator's family was trying to get to the United States. So she wouldn't get raped, the narrator's brother tied her breasts and gave her his shirt to make her look like a boy. When one of the pirates stopped to look at her closely, the narrator's brother stabbed the pirate to save his sister, but he was killed for trying to do so. The narrator is haunted by the death of her brother, so she writes ghost stories that break the rules of the genre, just like Nguyen's. The narrator knows that ghosts don't always try to get back at people who hurt them in life. Sometimes ghosts are calm, like her brother, and will let you give them a dry set of clothes if they get wet. In The Other Man, a quiet, sensitive Vietnamese immigrant named Liem moves to the U.S., where he is sponsored by a rich gay activist named Parrish Coyne. Liem lives in San Francisco with Parrish in a nice house with two floors. Marcus, a student in his 20s, is Parrish's boyfriend. He lives with them as if he were a kept man. Liem, on the other hand, gets a terrible job as a cleaner at a liquor store so he can send money to his family in Vietnam. While Parrish is in Washington, D.C. for the weekend, Marcus takes Liem to a Cantonese restaurant in Chinatown. There, Marcus tells Liem about how his strict, conservative father found out about him when a jealous ex-girlfriend sent pictures of Marcus in compromising positions to his father, who was an executive at a rubber company. When the men talk like this, it makes them want to have an affair. On the same weekend, Liem gets a letter from his father, who is afraid of the communist government in Vietnam and can't say what he wants because he doesn't want to be picked out by soldiers. Even though Liem loves his family, he doesn't feel like he's part of their world. He can't even recognize himself in the mirror. America has made him different. In War Years, a person who doesn't have a name talks about his childhood. On Sundays, he goes to church with his Christian parents and then works at the family grocery store, in New Saigon. He hates working there, so he saves all his money to buy comic books and candy. One day, Mrs. Hua comes into the shop and asks for money to help the rebels in Vietnam who are fighting against the communist government. At the time, the narrator's parents don't want to pay, but Mrs. Hoa's arrival starts a heated argument in their house about whether or not they should pay in, if so, how much. Mrs. Hua asked them for $500, but the narrator's mother doesn't want to give the full amount out of principle. When the young narrator says that they should pay the full $500, his mother asks, are you going to be the kind of person who always pays the asking price? But in the end, the narrator and his mother go to Mrs. Hoa's house and give her some of the money. In The Transplant, Arthur Arellano, a middle-aged gambler, gets a liver transplant because he has autoimmune hepatitis. Because of a mistake at the hospital, he finds out after the fact that his liver donor was Men Vu. Men Vu was a grandfather and widower who died in a hit-and-run accident. Arthur starts calling all the Vus in the phone book, hoping to find someone who is related to Men Vu so he can thank them for the liver. This leads to a sort of partnership with Louis Vu, a store that sells fake designer bags, shoes, and clothes. As part of the deal, Arthur must hide these fake things in his garage. This makes his marriage worse, which was already in trouble before he got sick. Before Arthur was diagnosed, his wife, Norma, left him for a short time because of his gambling. When they find out that Louis has nothing to do with Men Vu, Norma tells Arthur to take the fake goods out of the garage. Unfortunately, Arthur will be arrested for aiding and abetting the crime if he tells on Lewis. He can't do anything about it. In I'd Love You to Want Me, Mr. Khan, an old professor, seems to have Alzheimer's disease. At a wedding banquet one day, he calls his wife Yen instead of her real name. Mr. Khan gets confused when she tells him he's wrong, and he won't tell her who Yen is or what she meant to him. His wife worries that he doesn't recognize her and is mistaking her for another woman he might have loved. Many times, Mrs. Khan tries to remind him who she is. While Mr. Khan's illness gets worse, their children worry that Mrs. Khan won't be able to care for him. One day, when she quits her job at the public library, he gets lost. She drives around their neighborhood calling his name, only to come home and find him in their own library, where she keeps the books he has given her over the years. She finally makes up her mind to read them. In The Americans, James Carver, a veteran of the Vietnam War, and his wife Machiko go to Vietnam. 
Carver didn't want to go on this trip, but his wife and daughter, Claire, talked him into it. He's trying not to look sad. But he doesn't like Claire's new job as an English teacher in Hue, a city in central Vietnam, or her new boyfriend, Koi, who has gotten money from the Department of Defense to design robots that remove landmines. Koi tries to get along with Carver by listening to jazz with him, but Carver picks a fight with Koi over his work with the DoD. He asks the young man if he has thought about what his work in robotics could mean for the world as a whole. He says, some smart guy working on a defense contract at a university will figure out how to put a landmine on that robot. Carver leaves in a rage, gets caught in a storm, and gets very sick with a fever. Even though she was mad at him for telling her to leave Vietnam, she went to see him in the hospital. He starts to cry when she has to help him get to the bathroom. In Someone Else Besides You, the main character, Thomas, has two jobs. One is as a customer service manager for a company that sells hearing aids, and the other is as a watchman at a luxury high-rise. He can't stop thinking about his ex-wife Sam, who left him in part because he didn't want kids and she did. He worries that his kids will turn out like his father, Mr. P, who cheated on his wife and often made his kids run until they puked, supposedly to make them stronger. Thomas's mother died not long after his father started dating Mimi, a thin middle-aged woman with a perm. Thomas is still hurting from his divorce, so this makes him sad. One day, his father tells them they have to go see Sam. When they get there, they find out that she is pregnant with a child from another man. Sam invites them in and shows them pictures from the summer before her trip to Vietnam, but she doesn't tell them who the father is. Mr. P throws a rock through Sam's windshield after they leave. The next day, Sam goes to Thomas's apartment to scream about the car repairs. He gives her enough money to pay for the new windshield and then offers to be the baby's father and raise it as his own. She is shocked, but she doesn't say no. In Fatherland, Mr. Lee gives his second set of three kids the same names as his first set. When he was kicked out of Saigon because of the new economic zones program, which moved millions of Vietnamese people between 1975 and 1980, his first wife left him. He didn't find out that his wife had left Vietnam until he was halfway through his five-year sentence. At that point, he had no choice but to divorce his first wife and marry the second Mrs. Lee, his mistress, with whom he had his second set of children. At the beginning of the story, Mr. Lee gets a letter saying that his firstborn daughter, who has taken the name Vivian after the Hollywood actress Vivian Lee, who starred in Mr. Lee's favorite movie, Gone with the Wind, will soon be visiting Vietnam. In previous letters, the first Mrs. Lee said that her daughter Vivian was a successful pediatrician, and Mr. Lee's second family is looking forward to meeting her. But Vivian is not a pediatrician, she is a receptionist who was recently fired after having an affair with her boss. She tells her sister Fuang, but she keeps the truth from the others. She uses the money from her severance check to pay for her trip and fancy dinners. In the end, Fuang burns the pictures that Vivian sent back to Vietnam from their trip. 